Hi everyone, this is the Stupid Genius 55. I'm gonna give you. I was gonna do this video like a, cu a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's my opinion on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity because the game kind of is polarizing a bit among the fan base. Some people think it's good, some people don't really like it that much uh, compared to the older ones. I honestly think this game is a substantial improvement from the older ones, to be honest, even though a lot of people disagree with me. But I, I do kind of understand why some people don't like it. There's not, um, quite, um, quite simply, there aren't as many Pokemon in this game, and most of them are from 5th gen. A lot of people are not into the 5th gen Pokemon, which I honestly don't get. I am, I think they're all okay. I kind of like them. Uh, like, I like them as much as the previous gens, basically, so I guess that's why I don't have a problem with it, because of the starters you have, you get a choice between between the universe starters, Nivy, uh, Oshawott, and Tepig, and you also get Axew and you get Pikachu, and that's kind of it. The previous games had starters uh, from all the gens up to that point, and plus a bunch of extras, like uh, like a bunch of other ones. Um, and most of the Pokemon in the game, like beyond, like uh, Eve, even not including the starters, most of the Pokemon in that game are there, there's a very limited amount of them, and most uh, a good chunk of them are the fifth gen one, which again, a lot of people don't like fifth gen Pokemon. So if you're not a big fan of those, then I can I can definitely see why you're not into it. But that being said, I find let me explain something. I have a bit of a problem with the Mystery Dungeon series, and that I find the gameplay can get really really repetitive and tedious, it, it, and I I don't have fun through a good chunk of it, because you often go through, like, the same dungeons, they're very, I think the dungeons are way too long, to be honest, maybe I don't, I don't really play that many roguelikes, keep in mind, so, I don't know if this is standard, but, um, so yeah, I guess if you like roguelikes, I, I don't really know, I can't really compare them to other roguelikes, mind you, so, but the mystery, uh, Gates to Infinity, in my opinion, from what I've, like, for me, has that problem to a much lesser extent than the previous installments of the series had because um, the dungeons are a bit shorter. Sometimes the in the older games you'd have you'd go onto a floor and the stairs would be randomly appear right next to you like as soon as you enter the floor. So and that doesn't seem to happen as much in this game. So I guess that can make it seem longer. But um, I really it didn't feel as tedious when I was playing the Gates to Infinity. Really, I had a better ex like I felt like I was having better experience playing Gates to Infinity than I had playing uh, Explorers of Time, Darkness Guy. You know? Um, that was my big problem with the entire series. Um, I think the story though is fantastic, and um, for the what you call it, the game. <laughs> Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2, and, um, I think, uh, Gates to Infinity story is roughly on par with, uh, I think with, uh, Explorers of Time, Darkness Sky, I think it's about as good, to be honest, um, and the gameplay is just a bit less tedious, so that's kind of why I like it, that, that's why, that is why I like it, just as much, um, but yes, that's because, that's probably because I'm not, I don't really, uh, have, uh, I, I'm, I like the Unova Pokemon, I like Gen 5 Pokemon, so if you're not into Gen 5 Pokemon, then yes, I can definitely see why you prefer the older ones. I honestly like the, uh, Gen 5 Pokemon, um, just as well, so. And as for the, as for the starters, um, another thing that I kind of like better about this one, even though there's a less of a choice, I'm so glad you don't have to do a quiz anymore. Some people like the, uh, kind of atmosphere, I, I, some people like the quiz better, because the personality quiz that you take to get the Pokemon, and although I like the atmosphere of it, if you want to select a specific Pokemon to use, because they throw the questions at you randomly, um, well, sorry, like, the, the choice of questions is random, it takes so long to pick one because you're not guaranteed to get questions that will let that would even you know get you your pokemon like what i did was i look up guides on what questions to answer for which pokemon i'll get and every single time like tons of times they won't give me the right uh questions in order to get that pokemon and i would just have to re restart it so many times and it, it was so frustrating to me to be honest i really just like that they let you pick which pokemon you want right out of the gate that being said i do not like the fact that they only gave you five i understand uh, i understand why they probably did it it's because you know for a new player in the series like getting to choose directly your starter if they gave you like 20 or so pokemon to choose from it'd be pretty overwhelming i mean it's a pretty important decision you get the pokemon for the rest of the game so um it, like that's when you're sticking with so I, I get why they did it but they really should have given you more than five like i don't think that they should have limited 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 it to just five and i am really surprised that uh even though i do like fifth gen pokemon i am really surprised that you didn't get a choice of starters from previous gen aside from pikachu like charmander or mudkip or rio 
Olu, some of those really popular ones that a lot of people are into, they should have had those, to be honest. Now, to be honest, I don't think they should have had about as many Pokemon as the older Mystery Engine games had, because as I said, for new players, you know, it'd be pretty overwhelming to just, when you don't have the information, just to choose a new Pokemon. And even though you could choose your partner, like, uh, in the older Mystery Engine games, you could choose your partner from any of, like, the 20 or so Pokemon uh, that, that they'd give you, but in that case, you know, it, it doesn't really seem as big a deal, because you've already, they've already chosen your your first starter, so the second one, they give you, like, by the way, they give you, like, a choice of eight or so uh, starter, they, they, even though you can choose from any starter you want, there's, like, this uh, menu that you have to scroll through to see them all, and I assumed that you could only choose from, like, eight randomly chosen ones for your partner, to be honest, uh, after. Like, basically, what I mean is that uh, once you choose Pokemon, I thought that your partner could only be, like, the choices for your partner Pokemon, I assumed that they, that, like, the eight choices they showed you immediately are the only ones that you were allowed to pick that time, and I didn't know you could scroll through the list and see more. Um, that's pretty, but yes, I, I really, I do agree that, uh, their choice of, the way they handled the start, choosing the starters, I do, on the whole, like, better than the previous way they did it, but they could have done it much better. They could have added uh, maybe, like, five or so of the older Pokemon, to be honest. But on the whole, I really think the game is not as tedious as the older installments, and the story is just as good as, uh, or, like, to me, I find the story roughly as good as, uh, Time, Darkness, Scott, well, the Pokemon Mission Engine 2 games. So, um, yeah, that's basically what I think. So, have fun, everyone. On second thought, your host has returned. A little update. When I first played Gates to Infinity, I was on a vacation and I was playing the whole thing kind of constantly, just in one, in big chunks, I guess. And now that I've been doing it for YouTube to record the cutscenes, and there's only certain times of the day when I can, re when there's not that much noise pollution that I can really record the cutscenes, and there are, are limited times that I can actually play the game as a result, I've been playing the game in much smaller bits, and that's actually changed my opinion of the game somewhat. I haven't done the whole thing through yet, and I haven't really bothered to do much of the Magnegate missions. Those can be kind of hard, actually, but uh, I thought I'd explain that now that I've been playing it in smaller chunks, I think the game has gotten much better for that playstyle, and uh, originally, I said that the game still got tedious, and I wouldn't really recommend it for very many people, but if you're willing to to play it in not, like, one big, large playing sessions, if it's something that you're just gonna maybe pick up for, like, maybe 10 minutes a day or so, I think the game is much more fun in that kind of format. The opinion on the story has also changed somewhat. In one aspect for the positive and one aspect for the negative, I, th I said that uh, the story is, that it can get pretty repetitive, um... Like, the cutscenes can drone on and on. Although the Explorers games did the same thing, this game has the problem to a slightly more extent, and as a result, the story isn't quite as good as Explorers. I actually kind of want to take uh, that back, because I've realized that I actually do enjoy the story. I, I, I find myself enjoying the story, it's just not in quite the same way, you see. Well, uh, Pokemon Mystery Engine 2 has, I think has a better plot line, like the events that actually happen in the story are more numerous, they're are more meaningful, and they have a bigger impact on me, the actual events that transpire in the game, that Gates to Infinity just does not have. But Gates to Infinity, and I don't know if this is gonna get it, I'm gonna get some flack for this, I think Pokemon Mystery Engine Gates to Infinity has better characters than Explorers games. Now, considering how legendary Wigglytuff's guild is, I know I'm gonna be, like, I know a lot of people are probably gonna disagree with me on that, but here's the issue for me. As awesome as Wigglytuff's guild is, they weren't weren't part of the main cast. Like, they were all so side characters. Well, of course, Wigglytuff and Chatot themselves were major characters, but they weren't part, they weren't main characters. The player and the partner were, and then there are a few others that happen throughout that, uh, kind of, it'd be a, I'd spoil too much if I mentioned who it was that kind of came and went. But Mi Pokemon Mystery Engine Gates to Infinity actually did something that I kind of wanted to see. It expanded the main cast beyond just those two characters. Now, oftentimes having more characters in your main cast Usually what that can kind of mean is that each individual character gets less focus. So even though you have more, can sometimes trade off uh, not having as much as well characters of the same quality. But I don't find that the two, uh, the player and the partner in Gates to Infinity really are, they're not quite as good as the ones from the Explorers of uh, Sky. I think the dynamic that are, that's created between the duo of the main character and Explorers of Sky is better than the, duo, than the dynamic created by the duo in Gates to Infinity. With uh, Explorers, you know, the partner is kind of 
timid and he needs your the main character to get uh, to get courage and the drive to do things. The partner in Gates of Infinity kind of does that for everyone else outside, for pretty much the world at large. He's trying to, he or she is trying to motivate everyone, and is trying to change things for the better. So it's a kind of a different kind of protagonist. But the thing is, not only are the team that is created by the player and the partner in Gates of Infinity just as good, in my opinion, well, better than uh, Wigglytuff's Guild, to be honest. Not that Wigglytuff's Guild is bad, but these guys are a little bit better. But they're part of the main cast, and they're fleshed out better. Not just the main cast, actually, but um, a lot of the side characters, like Girder, Caldeo, they get a bit more focus. Espeon and Umbreon, even though they join the team as well, but, uh... And the villains also have better motivations. In Pokemon Mission Dungeon Explorers of Time, Darkness, Sky, even though the villains are really good, don't get me wrong, they're either crazy, like literally insane, or they're doing things because they're evil, basically. Those are the only two villains that you see through pretty much throughout the Explorers games. In Gates to Infinity, they all have their own motivations, they've had their own experiences that kind of scarred them. Even though, uh, in the case of some, they're only kind of vaguely alluded to, it's still better, I think, than uh, the motivations behind the villains in Pokemon Mission Engine Explorers Guide. Now, would I say that in to- that the villains in general in uh, Gates to Infinity are better than Explorers games? I wouldn't go that far to say that absolutely. I wouldn't say it's impossible for that to be the case, though. That the villains in this game are better than the villains in Explorers of Time, Darkness, Sky. The villains in Time, Darkness, Sky are really, really good. Gates Infinity, though, they have their kind of own charm. I think that uh, the villain in the villains in Explorers of Time, Darkness, Sky... I'm not going to spoil anything if you haven't seen it, but uh, there's more build-up to them and their abilities, like they're shown to be very capable foes. And that isn't quite the case in uh, Gates to Infinity, so I guess I guess I'm going to say, say that the Explorers villains are a bit better overall. But then again, there are more numerous uh, ones in Gates to Infinity as well, so maybe I, I really can't say which is the better experience. But as I said, the, uh, the villains of Explorers of Sky are kind of uh, intimidating for what they can do. In Gates to Infinity... Sometimes, as characters, they're a bit more likable. Maybe maybe uh, one of the villains in Sky gets a bit better than he was in uh, Time and Darkness. There's a little bit more focus on him or her. In fact, my main gripe with the story of Gates to Infinity is the after game, which is not not for what's there, but, what f- but for what isn't there. With Explorers of Time, Darkness, Sky, you had a fairly good after game that was decently long. It resolved some major questions that were po- that the viewer might have in the main story. And in Gates Infinity, the heroes are posed with a problem that realistically could have fueled a plot that was as complex and as long as the Explorers to Time, Darkness, Skies after game. It could have had something as long as that. Not going to spoil what uh, Gates of Infinity's main after game problem is, for those who haven't seen it, but it gets resolved in a single dungeon without a boss fight. Granted, you're alone while that happens, and I guess that's supposed to feel kind of epic, but really, like, that could have gone much longer. If you know what the after, what actually happens, I think you'll know what I'm talking about, how they could have made it longer. And after all gets resolved, your Pokemon are able to evolve, I know. And then, you know, you go out and do a bunch of legendaries. But aside from that, from what I can gather, no real story. I mean, after, I stopped paying attention after that uh, point. Because, like, after that point, I stopped playing the game, and that's when, you know, to record my cutscenes. And uh, I haven't really watched any LPs past that point, but like I, a little, I've seen a little bit of them, and I know it seems to me it's just legendaries are happening, kind of like in what happened with the uh, red red rescue team and blue rescue team for me when I kind of discontinued uh, the series after I felt you know. I've d- at, when I was uploading cutscenes, I was at a point where I could just upload. Well, I could upload like battles with legendaries, and I didn't really see that there was much story left, really. So I thought I might as well just not do it, since it looked like it would take quite a while, to be honest. Unless someone requested, if you want me to show you a certain like the cutscene before a certain legendary battle, uh, go right ahead. I use cheats through those games, though, just so I know. So I mean, the actual battle isn't going to be very m- much. It's just going to be me using, you know, my level one hundred one. Uh, Marsh Tomp, I mean, Swampert. But if you do, for some reason, want to see, like, the cutscene before the boss fight, I still do have the save ready, just in case, and you can contact me about that. But, uh, one last thing. I want to introduce a new sort of rating scale. 
I have a bunch of adjectives, which you can see on the screen, that I used to rate a game. Originally, I would have put Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity, as with all the other games in the series, somewhere in between the poor to decent to nice, one of those areas. It's not really extreme and uh, neither extremely good nor extremely bad. I think it can fit into any one of those categories. But that's really if you're just playing it like I did and you're playing it, you know, like I was when I was on vacation, I mean. And I was just going through the whole thing in large chunks. If you play much smaller chunks, it gets significantly better. If you play a bit more casually, it gets significantly better, in my opinion. So I might put it on the good to superb category, maybe even great. One of those, I guess I'll give it a superb rating. If you're playing it just through the main, if you're playing in large chunks, I'll only be able to give it a nice rating. I'm going to give it a superb rating for large for those who are playing it in smaller chunks. And I get, since I can't really break it up into those two, though, I'm going to give the game an overall good rating because of that. That's the one I'm putting this game in, and I will be seeing you later. You have a nice day.